Once you begin a project or project template, you will want to ensure that the mechanical settings are adjusted to match preferences and company standards. Revit has mechanical settings which control a variety of analysis and graphic display settings. The pipe settings can be accessed in the Mechanical Settings dialog. You can access the mechanical settings by clicking the dialog launcher on the HVAC panel, Mechanical panel, or Plumbing and Piping panel. Each one opens the Mechanical Settings dialog. You can also access the mechanical settings from the Manage ribbon in the Settings panel by expanding the MEP Settings button and choosing Mechanical Settings. In this dialog, the various settings appear in the pane on the left in a tree structure. When you select a setting on the left, the available options populate in the pane on the right. The first settings are for Hidden Line. Here, you can select whether or not to draw MEP hidden lines when objects cross in two-dimensional views. Then you can control the line style by clicking in the value field and expanding the drop-down. Additionally, you can control the inside and outside gaps, along with the single line gap. Next, click Pipe Settings to switch to those options. Here, you can choose whether or not to use the annotation scale for single line fittings and then specify the pipe fitting annotation size. The pipe fitting annotation size controls the plotted size of fittings and accessories drawn in single line views. It is also maintained regardless of the drawing scale. Next, you can specify a symbol for the pipe size prefix pipe size suffix, and pipe connector separator. Then you can enter a pipe connector tolerance and pipe rise drop annotation size. Next, select angles. The options here allow you to specify the fitting angle that Revit will use when adding or modifying pipe. Realize that this is not the angles at which pipes can be created. Instead, it is the angles between connected pipes. In other words, the angles of the fittings. You can choose Use Any Angle or Use Specific Angles. With Use Any Angle selected, Revit will use any angle supported by the fittings used for the pipe type. And with Use Specific Angles selected, you can turn on or off the listed angles but you cannot modify the angles. When you select Conversion under Pipe Settings, the available options control how the pipe systems will be routed using the routing solutions. You can control the system classification using the drop-down at the top. Here, you can select numerous piping system types, such as hydronic, domestic, and fire protection systems. The main and branch settings then control how those pipe systems will be routed using the routing solutions. The main settings allow you to control the pipe type and offset for main pipe runs for each of the system classifications. When you click in the Pipe Type value field, you can expand the drop-down and select any of the available pipe types that are loaded into the project. The offset is simply the height of the pipe above the current level. The branch settings are the same, only they control branch piping. When you select Segments and Sizes, you can see that there are multiple options available. In the Segment drop-down, you can choose one of the available piping materials listed. With any of these selected, you can then control the properties and size. If you do not see a segment that you like, you can create a new pipe segment. You can also delete a pipe segment. Under Properties, you can specify the roughness, 
and give this segment a description if you wish. Lastly, you can control the sizing for the segment. In the Size Catalog area, the nominal size is shown along with the ID, or inside diameter, and the OD, or outside diameter. These values cannot be changed. However, you can add a new size or delete a size. You can also control the pipe sizes that can be specified from the options bar when creating piping and also if a certain size will be used if Revit automatically sizes the piping. To add a new size, click New Size. Revit displays the Add Pipe Size dialog. Here, you can specify the nominal diameter along with the ID and OD. Click Cancel to close the dialog. To add a new segment, click Create New Pipe Segment at the top. Revit displays the New Segment dialog. You can use the options here to create a new segment. Click Cancel to close the dialog. When you select Fluids, a large table appears on the right. Pay attention to the Fluid Name drop-down at the top. Here, you can select one of the available fluid types. If you do not see what you need, you can select Add Fluid. Take note that the fluids must be based on water or glycol. You can also delete a fluid. With the fluid selected, you can see the temperature, viscosity, and density of the fluid. You cannot edit any of the values for existing fluids. You can delete an existing fluid and then create a new one based on the desired attributes. You can also select New Temperature to display the New Temperature dialog. Here, you can specify a new temperature, viscosity, and density. Click Cancel to close the dialog and then switch to the Slope settings. Here, you can see the available slope values. If you need to, you can create a new slope. When you click New Slope, Revit displays the New Slope dialog, and you can enter a new slope value. Click Cancel to close this dialog. Lastly, when you select Calculation, you can see the calculation method used for pipe straight segment pressure drop calculation on the Pressure Drop tab, and how fixture units are converted to flow for plumbing fixtures on the Flow tab. On either tab, when you expand the Calculation Method drop-down, you can choose the method you want to use. Third-party developers can create additional calculation methods and install them as add-ins. If you install one of these new methods, you can select it here in the Calculation Method drop-down. Below the drop-down, you can see the equation and the variables used to calculate the pressure drop. 